Pipeline was awesome this week, mainly because we were in it. Bob teaches us how to buy a battery power tool, and Clint explains the FlexVolt advantage. This is your Power Tool Week in Review. This episode is brought to you by Ohio Power Tool. Pro tools, pro service, all of the best prices at ohiopowertool.com. And Ego, power beyond belief. Welcome back, Power Tool fans. I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah. It's October 16th, 2020. And today we're going to cover the latest Power Tool news and point out the best tool videos of the week. But before we do that, do me a favor and tap the thumbs up on this episode so more people can see it. And now, the Power Tool news. Yesterday, Milwaukee launched the third episode of Pipeline, which featured a few new Milwaukee tools. Most importantly, it featured us. You're welcome. We were fortunate to be invited to participate in this episode of Pipeline by helping them introduce the Milwaukee Top Off. But that wasn't all the news. They also announced an updated Sawzall, a few new tools for linemen, including a crimper and bucket accessories, an M18 14-inch chop saw, an M12 fuel band saw, and some new toys for our plumber friends. Overnight, we published a ton of new videos with extra photos, videos, and information you didn't see in the Pipeline event. We'll be sure to include a link to the full Pipeline playlist below. It won't further confuse us all by announcing the new FlexVolt Advantage series, but luckily for us, Clint is here to clear it all up. He specifically got his hands on both the circular saw and the hammer drill, but this first video is about the drill. In theory, the FlexVolt Advantage means that this drill way overperforms if you use a FlexVolt battery. This three-speed hammer drill comes with a sheet full of really impressive numbers, and Clint does a really good job putting it all to the test with both a normal and flex volt battery. So, did the battery really make that big of a difference? You'll have to watch to find out, and you can find Clint in the Tool Review Zone on YouTube. So I have a quick confession to make. A couple years ago, Sarah and I had the pleasure of meeting Martin of In Martin's Garage at a trade event, and I've been watching his content ever since. The only problem? Martin's always speaking in some foreign language. It's Spanish. Yeah, there's no way of knowing exactly what it is. Spanish. Anyways, today I just realized that you can turn on subtitles in YouTube and then tell it to auto-translate. Turns out he's not only fun to watch, but it's way more fun when you know what he's saying. This week, Martin got his hands on the new Hilti SFE 2 A12 multi-head installation drill driver. This subcompact class 12 volt drill includes an offset, right angle, 13 millimeter keyless chuck, and a hex bit holder. The brushless motor boasts 301 inch pounds of maximum torque and hits 1600 RPM in top gear. Besides its natural versatility, it also features specialized ergonomics and includes two ultra bright LEDs to light up your work. Now, Martin seems sincerely impressed by the drill, assuming Auto Translate is doing a good job. He goes into great detail on each of the four heads and makes a great case for adding this drill to your kit. For the full review, head over to Martin Shavaria on YouTube. Usually when we're talking about Bob from I Like to Make Stuff, we're on our maker show, Maker Break. But his most recent episode of Bits, he shares a fantastic guide to battery-powered tools. A lot of his advice is fairly fundamental, but the truth is even pro tradesmen head into a tool store looking to solve a problem with a power tool only to find 12 different options in 20 different colors. Don't do the math on yeah, that. Yeah, I was about to say. So Bob walks you through not only the basic benefits of using a battery powered tool, but he also helps you understand why you would choose one brand over the other and which voltage makes the most sense for the job you have to do. So if you plan to buy a battery powered tool in the next year or so, we highly recommend you watch this episode over at I Like To Make Stuff on YouTube. Okay, it's time again for some actual work with Rob Robillard. Hey, Rob, Sarah, how are you guys? Doing all right, Rob, how are you? I'm good, thank you for asking. This week's tip, I wanna talk about not using bleach to kill mold in basements. People think bleach is, it's, it's a common misconception that using bleach will kill mold. Mold, um, bleach will kill mold on non-porous surfaces. Think porcelain, stainless steel, granite, something like that. It will not kill bleach on organic stuff, paper products, cloth, carpets, things like that. Uh, mold grows on all kinds of materials. We talked about this last time. Um, water leaks, flooding, damp basements, humidity levels above 70%, all of these things can contribute to mold growth. Bleach works well on non-metallic stuff. 
If you are going to treat bleach, we recommend you use some sort of an uh, organic enzyme, an enzyme that kills mold. This is uh, Contact. We've used Sporocidin. There's been other products that we've used as well. Uh, this particular product, is just we use it full strength, and once we remove the, we remove the wet drywall, we spray all the studs, any areas with this enzyme. We do one or two coats. It has kind of a citrus smell. There's stronger chemicals that you can use as well, but you're gonna need a respirator. I hope this helps, guys. Have a great week. Thanks so much, Rob. As we mentioned last week, Shane, the construction junkie himself, recently shot a ton of new interviews with industry titans for the digital version of Procore's Groundbreak 2020. He's rolling out videos on a fairly regular basis, including this week, where he talked with Tom from Struction Site, who talks in depth about 360 degree photo documentation for construction. You can watch this interview and the rest of his Procore content over at constructionjunkie.com. Swinging over to Instagram, Paul the Tool Pig is running a giveaway right now for some of our favorite construction pants from Lock Louder. I want Paul's pants. Hugh from HD Carpentry was showing off his DeWalt Flexible Mixing Drill, which he insists is 54 volts, not 60, but I have no idea if we can really trust him. You cannot. You can't. And finally, Murray from Kruger Construction has started showing off his new Makita 40 volt XGT drills that for some reason are available in Canada, but not here in the States. Seriously, Makita, where's my 40 volt? I really feel like that's a reasonable question to ask. Right? right? Last week, we watched Jake of All break all of his Milwaukee pack out, which you can watch right here. Special thanks to Ego and Ohio Power Tool for sponsoring this episode. Guys, we couldn't do it without you. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. We'll see you next week.